Guys, Steve here with Fibbly TV. Look, don't forget to subscribe. Over the first six to nine months, you want to make sure that the dog is getting uh, all the nutrition it literally needs. And you know, one of my favorite books here, and don't ask me what book it is by now, you should know. About 90% of the longitudinal, longitudinal growth takes place in the first six to seven months. Longitude is what? It's long, basically. So what happens is, and now mind you, this varies from breed to breed, and you got to go down to IGF-1 and all these genetics and DNA, and that will determine too how big or how well or how long it takes for the bone to grow. And then even in German shepherds, you guys know that the back legs are longer than the front legs, which is also indicative of them having hip problems. So what happens for me over the next six to nine months as the bones begin to expand, meaning now they're going to go a little bit. They're going for the latitude of them. It's going to exchange. It's, it's like they're about to start spreading a little bit. And the height's kind of there from six to nine months. And depending on the breed, to be clear, your Great Danes, your XL breeds, a.k.a. I mean giant breeds, St. Bernard's, um, what else we got? Even Dobermans at times, they're going to continue to grow all the way to 18 to, to 24 months. But I believe in the bully, especially if you're talking about something that's got some rudimentarian and even some mastiff, you top out at about 18 months objectively. So what I've done then is from six to nine months, instead of me doing the fast thing with the dog, especially Harris, since she's the youngest, is when I up her food and start feeding her three times a week. Ah, my bad. Seven days a week. So what we did in this video is we meal prepped. I meal prepped her meals because, to be honest with you, it gets annoying and rather difficult <clears throat> when you uh, basically have to put this together every day. That's the truth. Feeding them all, which is five dogs, including he has five dogs now, four dogs, five dogs. Um, feeding them all, portioning out their meals, upping certain fishes at times, adding some beef taking away turkey, doubling down on chicken, organs sometimes, organs no times, you go, this is taxing. So one of the solutions I found was that if I meal prep the food, it would make it easier to go in there and give her a frozen popsicle. Now, things that I did to make sure that I complemented this growth, of course, is add our supplements. And you can go to my dog subs to get those things. So I make a protein shake. I add the, the, the Fortified, which is joint support. And as you see here, huh, that right there, people, is a joint and it's showing you all the things that are taking place in terms of growth uh, and there are certain sites in which the bones are fed nutrients and in, to ensure bone density ironically one of the tricks that I read and I'm call it a trick it's really none of the stuff is tricks if you actually go and investigate are, are lamb testicles Testicle, testicles and normally testosterone or foods that boost testosterone actually help with bone density so Hera has taken on a ectomorphic structure super lean super fit super springy I want to see if through food and nutrition I can dense her up a little bit now ego all the dogs to be clear they're on a three-day kick except for Hera now and they've been able to maintain and sustain weight I pushed that out and literally saw ego when I uh, will just say fasted him for up to four days after his last meal he finally threw a bile now so oh, that's that's terrible I wanted to see how far we could push the limits and what his body's actually holding on to and how his body's using nutrition so now that I know where he sits you go hmm what would change if I actually fed him seven meals and they were small compact meals that were super nutrient dense? Well, we'll be doing eventually a meal prep for Tron and Ego over, we'll just say a week's time. I was able to buy two deep freezers, so that simplifies our life. You can feed your dog frozen food and because the, 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 the summers here, they're now water requirements, AKA hydration. So in that I'm adding fruit, I'm adding vegetables. One of my favorite veggies is frozen spinach. And then I'm also making sure that the dogs just get a fair amount of water, again, mixed with fortified puppy blocks and definitely some omega-3s, which are gonna help reduce inflammation in the joint because now we have to up the ante in terms of the dogs working. And as they're growing, we wanna ensure that we're not causing future problems. Injuries don't happen. <laughs> it's crazy that I'm talking about this on this, this here, but they're, they're created. And that's due to improper training and in some cases, poor nutrition. 
when you have an inflamed joint or your knee swells up, that synovial fluid letting you know that uh, your knee's a little irritable and you've probably done something wrong. And it's the knee swelling up actually to protect you from tearing it. But if it keeps swelling up, normally you've torn your meniscus. So in this case, what have I done? I've already paid for torn uh, GMS up two growth plates and tore a ligament on her knee. That was $4,000. I've already paid for a TPLO surgery with, with Zara. She basically tore her ACL and I believe it was a CCL because that's what the dog has. That was $5,000. Uh, I'm, I'm, you know, eight, nine thousand dollars $9,000 in with two leg problems and even when Gia tore it, if you look at the interview, and I don't even know if I asked the chiropractor this on camera, but I asked him it for sure off camera. He said he could 100% uh, agree or believe that her tearing her knee as easy as she did uh, was nutrition based. So we often don't think about the impact of food until something goes wrong. In humans, let's say someone unfortunately gets cancer. You go, wow. Now all of a sudden you're like, I can't eat this. I don't want to eat anything that inflames me. I want to live. I don't want to die. When we are in our 30s, it's, uh, the irony is, is our body begins to make adjustments. And now all of those things we were never allergic to, they start showing they, they selves. You go, oh, boy, I can't have that no more. Can't have this more. I can't drink like I used to. Oh, hot food to tear my stomach up. Guess what? Right at about two and three for dogs is when, and definitely at the two-year range, we start seeing their allergies uh, progress. So the other trick that I would encourage you to do is make sure that your dog gets a ton of unique, if not a good range of food over the first year, year and a half of its life to reduce the risk of what? Allergies while also adding something like Manuka honey to the dog's diet as well. And that's just my, my, my general plug for you. So what we're going to do over the next three months is really manage Harris growth and see what changes. Uh, again, in this video, it was just her meals being prepped. When you do that, you go, wow, there's still four more dogs that have to eat. And, and you know, these are $15, $20 bags of, 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 I mean, meals, technically. We're talking about at least a patty. If you was making a, a hamburger or a turkey burger in this case, you could make a turkey burger with, with what she's got going. You could eat four or five chicken tenders because those are tenderloins. Uh, I don't know that anybody would want to eat beef, beef liver or, or kidneys or, or pork spleen, but the spleen itself is me also making sure that I continue to sustain and boost her immunity. And then the water, which is super important, is going to assist in making sure that her body runs. I mean, waters are oil. And dogs are made up, actually, uh, they're made up of more water than we are. And we can't tell them to do what? Go and, uh, hey, go drink some water. Make sure you get to a gallon a day. And, and here's the trick, too. You know I've used the vest at times to build muscle and strengthen the dogs. A dog's impact, let me make this make sense. Gravity is the key factor in a dog actually building muscle. Because a dog does not curl. It, it, it does not leg lift, it does not hamstring curl, it does not bench press, but gravity is just like for those that are Dragon Ball Z fans, what Goku would do when he was going to play dynamic, he turned the gravity up to 100 and, and trained himself there and that made him super competitive when he was fighting Frieza and the Ginyu Force. The only way a dog normally can increase muscle mass outside of genetics, but I mean like be strong and, and have some dense muscle, is actually by gravity. So then the question becomes, because weightlifting also helps do what? Strengthens bones, you got Parkinson's disease, it helps stabilize and, and gives the bones some strength that they need. They tell you to go box and do whatever, you know, do various things. It is how much resistance can we add to her safely to ensure that she actually puts on size from bone to body uh, to weight to everything so I'm very curious because she's probably one of the leanest dogs I've had in a while and uh, but she's taken on the ectomorphic structure for those that want to read more about ectomorphs endomorphs and mesomorphs there's a guy named William Shelton he developed a theory and he's super I mean it's an intense book if I'm being honest with you um, and you might not get it but uh, there's a lot just Good stuff to go out there and read and learn best you can. So at any who, at some point, the humerus, the femur, all these bones, they stop growing. 
but they never stop needing support. And in future videos, and I do mean in the very near future, I'll be breaking down why joint support is so important with the dog because they're almost in a constant state of mitosis. And that's just objectively growth. And we're not, you know, we, we'll, we start breaking down what about 40 years old. Think about that. Now, seven times seven is what? You do the math, it's 49. <laughs> it is, it's 49 objectively. And when your dog gets seven, what happens? His body starts breaking down. Isn't that crazy? We get in our 40s, some people peak in their 50s, depending on how active you've been, and the body breaks down. See, some of y'all in y'all 30s, <laughs> that body starts breaking down. In about three to five years of a dog's life, I would encourage you to really put an emphasis on what they're ingesting, digesting, absorbing and how they're utilizing things. It's my job to make sure that I can continue just to educate you on some things that I'd be mindful of as we continue to grow the business, the brand, and our program. So stay tuned, take care of your dogs. Meal prep will help you save so much time and energy. I'm the first to tell you, it gets annoying, discouraging, annoying, discouraging. I won't say discouraging, it's just annoying and time consuming making all these custom meals for these dogs. But we're going to keep at it, people. Take care of your dogs.